Hello, you beautiful people. My name is Andrew Shimkus. I'm a lawyer at the Energy Community Secretariat in Vienna, and here I'm going to tell you a few words about unbundling. Unbundling in the energy sector should be understood as an effective separation of network activities from commercial interests in order to ensure the legal, functional, administrative, organizational, and decision-making independence. These activities to be unbundled are in particular transmission, distribution, storage of natural gas and system ownership if that is something different from transmission activities. And these network activities have to be fully separated from commercial activities such as trade, uh, supply or production. A transmission system operator or a TSO is a company entrusted with the function of transportation of electricity or natural gas. An electricity transmission system operator transports electricity through high voltage network from generation facilities towards distribution or consumption networks. Whereas natural gas transmission system operator transports natural gas via high pressure pipelines again for further distribution or direct consumption. Whenever any of electricity or natural gas production, trade or supply activities are performed by the same company or a corporate group as is the transmission activity, so-called vertically integrated undertaking, this company or a corporate group has to be restructured so as to separate the transmission system operator from the company or from the group. The same company can never be engaged at the same time in transmission of electricity or natural gas and production, trade or supply. It was proven many times in practice that failure to unbundle the transmission from any other commercial activities in the energy sector risks the discrimination not only in the use of the network, but also as regards investments to the network. So in this regard, the unbundling as legal and regulatory measure was designed for three main purposes. First of all, unbundling aims at removing conflict of interest between the transmission system operator and other companies engaged in commercial energy activities. Secondly, unbundling aims at removing incentive for the vertically integrated undertaking to discriminate against its competitors as regards access to the network, access to information concerning the use of the network, as well as regarding network investments. And thirdly, unbundling aims at creating incentives for network access, access of new market entrants, as well as creating stable and transparent regulatory regime for the use of transmission network. Legal basis for unbundling was established by two internal energy market directives. Electricity Internal Market Directive and Natural Gas Internal Market Directive adopted by the European Commission and the Council back in 2009. Both directives form the so-called EU Third Energy Package. EU member states and contracting parties of the energy community are obliged to comply with unbundling requirements established by Internal Energy Market Directives in full scope depending on the chosen unbundling model. As regards the unbundling model, the internal market directives established three options. The ownership unbundling, the independent system operator, so-called ISO, and an independent transmission operator, so-called ITO. Ownership unbundling is always a must, except for the cases where on the 3rd of September 2009 in an EU member state, or on the 6th of October 2011 in an energy community contracting party, the transmission system was part of the vertically integrated undertaking. In those cases, EU member state or a contracting party respectively can opt for alternative models, that is ISO or ITO. Ownership unbundling implies full separation and independence of a TSO from the vertically integrated undertaking or any part thereof engaged in production, trade or supply. Ownership unbundled TSO is required to own the transmission network that is, all assets which are necessary to perform transmission-related functions. At the same time, a transmission system operator shall be fully and exclusively responsible for operation of the transmission network and provision of all transmission-related services. A vertically integrated undertaking may not exercise control or any other right over an ownership unbundled transmission system operator. This, however, does not preclude the vertically integrated undertaking's right to remain as a minority shareholder in the TSO. However, in this regard, a vertical integration cannot be given any voting rights 
or any powers informing corporate bodies of a transmission system operator. So in those cases, a vertically integrated undertaking can dispose financial shareholders' rights only. In case of ownership unbundling, a vertically integrated undertaking and a TSO shall also have separate shareholders. Should both companies be state-owned, as very usual is the case, a so-called separation within the state has to be implemented, meaning that shareholding in a vertically integrated undertaking on one hand and in a TSO on the other hand has to be assigned to separate bodies without any mutual subordination links, for example, to two different ministries. Ownership unbundling is the EU's most preferred option for unbundling of the TSO, and it is also considered as the most effective model for achieving the unbundling goals. Currently, ownership unbundling is the most popular model among EU member states. Unbundling of Belgium's Elian Fluxis, Dutch Tenet, both electricity and natural gas TSOs in Lithuania, National Grid in the United Kingdom, Enagas in Spain, as well as several others may serve as an example of the ownership unbundling. Unbundling of both Portuguese TSOs and of Romanian electricity TSO Transelectrica serves as an example of a so-called quasi-ownership. In those specific cases, the European Commission confirmed proper ownership unbundling of a TSO, which does not own directly the transmission network, but which is given an effective right to use and dispose the transmission network equal to that of an owner. The second unbundling model, the ISO, requires for establishment of an independent system operator separately from a vertically integrated undertaking. In principle, the ISO has to be established, formed and designed in a way as to comply with the ownership unbundling rules. However, under the ISO model, a vertically integrated undertaking is allowed to keep the ownership of transmission system assets, though only indirectly, through a legally and functionally unbundled separate company, a so-called transmission network owner. The latter cannot engage itself in any other energy activity and shall operate only as a manager of the transmission system property. At the same time, a transmission network owner shall rent or otherwise provide the transmission system assets for the use by a transmission system operator and ISO. The ISO model results in very complex network investment structures and invokes increased involvement of the national regulatory authority. It therefore remains pretty rare in the EU. Unbundling of the Latvian electricity transmission system operator Auspriegumatikos is the only ISO example in the electricity sector. Whereas in the natural gas sector, the ISO model was applied for unbundling of TSOs operating defined parts of gas pipelines, such as Polish part of Yamal Euro pipeline and several interconnecting transmission pipelines in Spain operated by Enagas. Under the third model, the ITO, a transmission system operator may remain an integral part of a vertically integrated undertaking. In this case, a transmission system operator has to be established as a separate network company. At the same time, additional measures, additional regulatory instruments have to be put in place in order to ensure effective working level independence of a transmission system operator. For example, this includes ITO's full capacity to perform transmission-related functions, its operational and decision-making independence from any other energy activity, independence of its staff and management, as well as effective supervision and compliance instruments. At the same time, an ITO has to be a direct owner of all transmission system assets. Relatively weak separation of ITO from a vertically integrated undertaking and possible influences thereof require for a very active and highly concentrated intervention by the regulatory authority. In fact, through a compliance officer, a national regulatory authority contains a constant, even daily focus over ITO's activities. The ITO model is the second most popular unbundling model in the EU. Unbundling of Austrian, French and German electricity and natural gas transmission system operators may serve as an example of ITO unbundling practice. It is worth mentioning that requirements for unbundling of transmission system operators does not preclude EU member states or energy community contracting parties from creating a so-called combined system operator. This means that a transmission system operator can at the same time be also engaged in distribution, 
gas storage or LNG activities, subject to the condition that proper unbundling of a transmission system operator is done according to the terms and conditions of a chosen unbundling model. Unbundling of the transmission system operator makes it eligible for certification, which is an ultimate check of the TSO's compliance with unbundling rules, as well as for its designation for transmission activities. Following the TSO's application, the certification is processed by the National Regulatory Authority. The latter, before it takes its final certification decision, shall take an utmost account of the opinion issued by the European Commission for EU member states or by the Energy Community Secretariat for the Energy Community's contracting parties. The certification is a documentary process which can last up to 10 months in total. We all have to understand that unbundling is not a one-time process. Following its unbundling, certification and authorization by the National Regulatory Authority, the transmission system operator has to comply with unbundling rules in its daily activities. The National Regulatory Authority and the European Commission or the Energy Community Secretariat respectively are given a mandate for continuous monitoring of the TSO's activity and its compliance. Failure to comply with the bundling rules may result by penalizing actions taken by the National Regulatory Authority. These actions may include financial sanctions as well as recertification procedure. So in any case, failure to comply may be very costly. Thank you very much for your attention. You may well bundle with your beloved ones, but you keep those TSOs unbundled.